the next scheme will summarize some important points regarding fertilization. So, uh, as a result of ejaculation, we got approximately 200 to 300 millions sperm cells in the vagina. Approximately 1% of this a population of sperm cells will reach the uterine cavity. and they will enter the fallopian tube and the meeting point with the oocyte will be reached by approximately hundreds of, of sperm cells. So hundreds of sperm cells will reach the oocyte. The typical or mo most common meeting point is in the ampullary region of the oviduct. So there is a huge selection. The first sperm that will reach the oocyte will get in touch with uh, the envelopes of this oocyte and will penetrate through these layers. So we got the cell membrane of the oocyte we know we got the zona pellucida layer made of glycoproteins and there then uh, we got the corona radiata cells sitting here on the zona pellucida which is the product of the of the membrana granulosa and the all sides so this will be the olema. Olema is just another word for the cell membrane of the oocyte. Uh, this is the zona pellucida. Between olema and zona pellucida, there is a tiny potential, more or less potential space called peri vitalin space. And here we got the corona radiator cells. And they could be like, for example, two layers of these. And the first uh, sperm that will reach this will adhere with its membrane and we know there is an acrosome a membrane system containing uh, hydrolytic enzymes here and they will these enzymes will be released. Prior to this each sperm cell has to undergo a process called capacitation it happens in the female uh, genital system and, and the outcome of this is that the sperm cell is prepared for the uh, release of this uh, enzyme for adhesion and the release of the enzymes from the acrosome, right? Corona radiator, Kimmler cells, right? So the acrosome contains a variety of molecules and enzymes. Let me mention, for example, the hyaluronidase, acrosin, or neuraminidase that will help with the adhesion 
and the penetration through these uh, through these layers. Acrosome is containing and releasing these enzymes. Which, by the way, this activation and release of the enzymes is called acrosomal reaction. So during this, the head of the sperm will penetrate through all the layers with the help of these enzymes. So we got a hole here in the zona pellucida. Perhaps I should mark the enzymes with different color. We got a hole in the coronal radiator. And we got adhesion and finally penetration through the olema. In the surface a layer of the cytoplasm of the all side, we got cortical granules. Cortical because they are on the um, in, in 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 the cortex of the cytoplasm in the most peripheral part. And uh, in the next stage, the release of these cortical granules, which is a reaction up, uh, upon the fertilization, will trigger a so-called cortical reaction. So these granules released from the other side into the outer space will cause several uh, responses. So cortical granules will be released into the perivitelline space, in that space outside the olema. As a consequence, uh, this makes uh, for other sperm cells impossible to enter the same oocyte because uh, the sperm cells will uh, not be able to adhere to the olema Also, the the olema will lose its permeability, and also the zona pellucida will be more far from the olema because the olema will kindly collapse. It will also change its electrical potential so the uh, perivitelline sp space will become larger. Altogether, this response is called cortical. Sorry, cortical reaction, and it prevents polyspermia. Which would mean uh, one fertilized one all side would be fertilized by more than one sperm cell. So this is not possible and uh, it's permitted mostly by the cortical reactions.
the content of the corticogranules is highly heterogeneous. They are enzymes. They are glycosaminoglycans. They are substances that bind to the surface polysaccharides responsible for the adhesion, etc. So in this stage, we already have the head of the sperm cell inside. We got a zona pellucida and we got the corona radiator here all around the the circumference okay now upon this uh, stimulus the uh, the secondary or side upon fertilization the secondary or side will complete the second meiotic division. Second meiotic division. Upon completion of the secondary uh, second uh, meiosis, we will see two pronuclei before they will fuse together. It will be the paternal or the male pronucleus from the nucleus of the sperm cell and the maternal or female pronucleus from the nucleus of the of the oocyte. So if this is the fertilized oocyte it's still surrounded by the zona pellucida, but here as the outcome of the second metric division we'll see the second polar body. Yes, there might be also the first polar body surviving from the completion of the first metric division. Perhaps I should have included into the previous schemes, but it was not a point. But now, newly appearing second polar body. So you can actually see, if you observe this process uh, using a microscope, you can actually see that really there was a fertilization. That was a completion of the second meiosis. And we got the the paternal, I may call it male, pro nucleus, because the complete nucleus has not been completed yet. And we got the maternal, or I call it female, pro nucleus. There is also the mitotic spindle that will or be or organized here. Preparing for the first mitotic division. Interesting point is that it comes from the centrioles of the sperm cells. of the sperm cell. So these two uh, nuclei will fuse together the male and female pronuclei will fuse thus forming a cell with a single nucleus and this fertilized oocyte with a complete nucleus is already called zygote. And the zygote has 46 chromosomes because each pronucleus brought 23 and there are two options 
either there are 46 chromosomes which includes two gonosomes this is a genetically female individual or there could be 46 chromosomes including one Y chromosome which makes the individual genetically male. Now the zygote undergoes a series of mitotic divisions which is called cleavage and the the progeny of the zygote, the daughter cells will be called blastomeres which will be explained on the next scheme.